we're just downstream from the Old River Control Complex, which is a Corps of Engineers structure for maintaining flood control water levels for the Atchafalaya Red System. The reason we're here today is to telemetry tag pallid sturgeon. Pallid sturgeon were uh, federally listed in like 1991. Shortly thereafter, we had crews notice that pallid sturgeon were entrained or being entrained through the control structure into the Atchafalaya system where they were not previously known to occur. The Old River Control Complex is the last of the Mississippi Rivers and Tributaries project areas that has not undergone a biological opinion. So we're here to try to evaluate the potential impacts of entrainment from the Mississippi River on the pallid sturgeon population. We started a project in around 2014 where we were looking at basically proof of concept. We telemetry tagged pallid sturgeon in the Mississippi River, had them released, and then documented their movement through the structure and into the Atchafalaya Red system. So we know that there's a sense of entrainment that's occurring on a kind of a background level, but we needed to have more quantifiable information. For entrainment through this structure, it's basically a, a one-way ticket. When they leave the Mississippi and go through the structure, it's not a mortal event got really good evidence to support that fish are living well in the Atchafalaya Red system, but that system does not offer the same suitable habitat for spawning and rearing that you would find in the free-flowing lower Mississippi. Our goal here is to try to understand how many sturgeon, both pallet and shovel nose, are entrained through the old river control structure, then come up with conservation measures as part of our biological assessment that we can recommend to Fish and Wildlife Service as a mitigating feature of, of reducing population impacts of this species in, in the Mississippi. One of the things that we would like to do following our development of this uh, biological assessment is develop a recovery program similar to what we do at the Bonnie Carey Spillway during those openings where entrained sturgeon are processed and returned back to the Mississippi River to fulfill their lives as pallid sturgeon in a free-flowing environment. What we're hoping to gain from this approach is, is through the biological assessment is provide some guidance on how the structure can be operated. So what we envision is being able to do telemetry tag uh, applications here, evaluate the entrainment rates and develop some sort of cookbook or rule book on how to recover those entrained fish and return them to the system. Once we can get an idea on the number of fish that can be processed in a year's time, then we can plug that into a population viability analysis and that should give us some measure of how long or how frequently we would have to undergo this operation to reduce the overall impact on the lower miss pallid sturgeon population. By having a transmitted fish in the Mississippi River, we cooperate with other agencies that also have receivers up and down the river for different reasons. A lot of it might be for monitoring the movement of invasive carp. There's also Arkansas Game and Fish who is looking at the movement of freshwater eels because they're migratory as well. By combining uh, the network together, we can put together movement patterns of these fish in essentially almost 2,500 miles of river. The fish can be released here, it can go up the Missouri 1,500 miles to Gavin's Point Dam. It's really a great opportunity for an interagency cooperative approach to fully understand, or at least better understand, the biology and life history of this endangered species.